On September 3rd, 1783, representatives of Great Britain and the United States of America signed the Treaty of Paris, ending the American Revolutionary War. 217 years later, the film The Patriot, depicting certain aspects of the war, was released. Though the main plot of the film is fictional, several main characters are real historic figures, or at least based on real ones, with significant alterations. But to what extent? How accurate is The Patriot? The film opens in 1776 as the South Carolina Assembly votes on a levy to support the Continental Army. Before the vote, some delegates argued that South Carolina should not join the war and that they should stay loyal to Britain, while others say they should not be ruled by a tyrant 3,000 miles away, which would have been an appropriate argument to have a few years earlier, as South Carolina militia had actually engaged in several major battles with British forces prior to the date given in the movie. Included in the assembly is the character Benjamin Martin, who is fictional, but based on several real historic figures, most notably Francis Marion. Martin abstains from voting on the levy as he says he would not fight in the war, and then continues to stay out of conflict until his son is murdered by a British officer in 1778. The real-life Marion had been enlisted and fighting the British since 1775 in the Continental Army, and after they were pushed out of the colony by the British, Marion raised a small band of irregular militia to fight a guerrilla war against the British as their only adversary in South Carolina. Gibson's character had seven children, two of whom were killed by the British, the first being murdered by a British officer, and later his eldest son Gabriel is killed in battle by the same British officer. Marion had no children, and so they and his motives for revenge are baseless. However, it is interesting to note that in a 1950s Disney television show about Francis Marion, they gave him a fictional nephew named Gabriel, who was also killed by the British. As for the British officer, Colonel William Tavington, he is loosely based on Bannister Tarleton, the real British officer assigned to capture or kill Marion. Tavington in the film is portrayed as brutal and cruel, committing numerous atrocities and war crimes. Tarleton was involved in an incident that would later become known as the Waxhaus Massacre, where British troops killed surrendering American troops. However, in both British and American accounts of the event, Tarleton didn't participate in the killings himself, and according to some, he didn't even order them. Still, he was the man tasked with stopping Marion from continuing to attack British troops and supply lines, and was also the one who gave him his nickname, the Swamp Fox, not the Ghost, as they call him in the film. The next most important character in the film, based on a real person, is Major General Charles Cornwallis who, as a film character, doesn't really do much. We see him eat dinner, attend a party, and coordinate vague military strategy. But in real life, he never actually parlayed with Marion, and there are some other details about his final battle that we'll cover in a bit. However, we can say that Cornwallis's utter contempt for militia in the film to the point of dismissing them in battle is greatly exaggerated as a huge number of battles in the American Revolution involved militia on both sides, including Cornwallis's own army. As for the action in the film, there are a few unnamed battles early on that we don't learn much about, so we can't say a lot about them. But the raids and ambushes carried out by Martin's men are fairly consistent with their real-life counterparts. The climactic battle, however, is mostly just a vague combination of several different events used as a plot device to bring together the three main characters, as they never actually met each other in battle. Also, Cornwallis actually won his final battle in South Carolina, but heavy casualties combined with other British losses is what actually forced him out of the colony. And the final fight between Martin and Tavington does not line up with their real-life counterparts, as they had no real rivalry between them, and as we already said, they never actually met each other in battle. The most important difference for those characters is that the real-life Tarleton did not die in the war, but would return to England a war hero and became an important politician and historical figure of Liverpool. The next few scenes are narrated by Martin as he describes the ending of the war, which is overly simplified but accurate. The historical part of the movie ends with Cornwallis' surrender at Yorktown, marking the last of the fighting in the colonies.
Cornwallis really didn't surrender to Washington personally. However, some do maintain that it was because he was ill, but that is unlikely. In the end, The Patriot is another movie that dances the line between true story and historic fiction, really exemplified in the two characters of Martin and Tabington, essentially taking the absolute best attributes of the Americans and applying them to one man, and the absolute worst attributes of the British and applying them to the other. Martin is a war hero and idealist who was against slavery and inequality, and while there were a small number of men who were against slavery at that time, the real Francis Marion was not one of them. And on the other side, Tavington murdered wounded soldiers, prisoners of war, and even burned down a church full of unarmed civilians. Bannister Tarleton was a well-respected military commander and later politician who wasn't one-tenth as cruel as his on-screen character. Ultimately, the film is just not very accurate, and seems to focus more on its message than its authenticity. But that's our opinion. Do you agree? Is there anything else you think we should have added? Let us know in the comments below, and let us know what other movies to look at next. Thanks for watching.